Today we're going to look at the iRig Pre and its use in micro-budget filmmaking. Before we test it out and start hacking this thing apart, let's first discuss what it is and what its uh, design intentions were. It was initially designed to be a preamp to allow users of iOS devices like iPhones and iPads to use professional quality microphones with those iOS devices. But the iRig Pre has a lot of things going for it as far as micro, low budget, micro budget filmmakers go. So let's take a look at some of the inputs, outputs, and controls on this device. In the bottom is an XLR plug where we'd plug our microphone into. On the side is a gain control so we can adjust our levels. There's a off, on, and 48 volt switch so you can turn the device off. On is for uh, dynamic type microphones and 48 volts is for phantom power on condenser type microphones that require uh, phantom power to power them. There are a few condenser microphones out there that have the ability to have their own batteries in them but having a device like this one will allow you a lot more versatility in what microphones you can choose out there. Uh, on the top is a headphone jack and all this really does is routes the signal from the iOS device to the iRig Pre. The, the iRig doesn't actually change anything it simply routes that signal through there. There's also a convenient little strap for uh, Velcro to strap it onto a mic stand or something like that. I think there's probably a more secure way of securing this onto a camera rig if, if that's the way you're going to go with this eventually. So one of the main drawbacks with this device is its initial intention, and that is to use with an iOS device. So the plug where you plug this into an iOS device is a four pole, three and a half millimeter male plug. And if we, if we look at this plug, we, from the tip, we have the left headphone channel, the right headphone channel, common, and then microphone. And this is why we can't just plug this into a microphone jack of a laptop or a camera because the microphone on the four pole plug is at the top and we need the microphone at the tip and the common on the where the third pole is on this. So before we get to the test to see how the iRig Pre works with the Canon T2i, um, there, I wanted to go over some of the hacks that are out there. Uh, the iRig Pre has a hack um, on the web right now from DSLR Film Noob. And it's pretty clever. He removes the cable completely and routes the signal internally here into the microphone jack. So you can just use an extension cable of whatever length you need for your camera. Um, I personally would prefer to keep as many hard connections as possible. So I would simply cut this line and solder a three and a half millimeter uh, stereo jack onto that and try to keep the length of that unbalanced portion to a minimum. Uh, I bought this for an iPhone project, so I'm not really ready to hack it. So I've been using this uh, Y cable. Uh, I'll have links to everything in the description. But the uh, Y cable is pretty long, and uh, you definitely want to get your unbalanced portion of the system uh, to a minimum to minimize uh, uh, possible interference. During the test, I'll change various settings on the camera and uh, I'll discuss my setup basically so you can hear my uh, hear what kind of dialogue audio it can record and then I'll have a portion of silence so you can see what the noise floor is and I may raise the uh, signal up in my nonlinearity system in Final Cut Pro 7 uh, to a higher level I'll indicate that on the screen if I do that uh, just so you can see the difference in noise between the, the different settings on the camera. This is a test of the preamps in the iRig Pre. It is supplying 48 volt phantom power to the 
AKG Perception 220 large diaphragm microphone. The signal is being routed to the Canon T2i using a cheap Y splitter cable. I'm recording it on the Canon T2i using Magic Lantern version 2.3. The analog gain is set to 17. The mic power is set to low Z. This is with mic power set to high Z. This is a test of the preamps in the iRig Pre. We now have the gain turned down a little bit on the iRig Pre and the analog gain in the Canon T2i is now set to 26 dB. This is at high Z. And this is at low Z. This is at high Z. And this is at low Z. I've now turned the gain down a little bit on the iRig Pre. I have the analog gain in the Canon T2i set to 32 dB, and this is at low Z. This is with the high Z setting. This is high Z. Oops, I keep. This is low Z. This is high Z. This is the sound at high Z. This is the sound at low Z. Now I'm going to turn my preamp all the way up. Now I have the preamp set to maximum gain on the iRig Pre, and they have the analog gain set at 10 dB in the camera. This is a test of the iRig Pre. It is supplying 48 volt phantom power to an AKG Perception 220 large diaphragm microphone. The signal from the Pre is running through a cheap Y splitter into a Canon T2i running Magic Lantern version 2.3. The analog gain is set at 10 dB. Digital gain is set at zero. And mic power is set at high Z. Now mic power is set at low Z. This is with mic power set at low Z. This is the iRig Pre set at maximum gain. I now have the analog gain on the camera set at 17 dB. 48 volt phantom power is being supplied to the AKG Perception 220 large diaphragm microphone. The output of the pre is running into the camera, running Magic Lantern version 2.3. I'm curious to see, I, I've listened to it with a headphone with the nonlinear editing system, uh, Final Cut Pro 7, and I'm pretty amazed that how well the iRig Pre works. Um, I'm kind of curious of how some of the settings will be after this is uploaded to YouTube, uh, to whether or not some of those subtleties will come through uh, once it's uploaded. 
uh, also good information. But in case it doesn't all come through, uh, some of the things that I learned was the digital gain uh, was not not useful, just leave it off. The analog gain wasn't bad, as long as you're around 10 to 17, it was really clean. Once you get up uh, 22 or 24, somewhere around there, you can start to hear a little bit of that noise floor come up. For the money, the iRig Pre is pretty amazing. Uh, it's very clean, and I think that this will be kind of a game changer for micro budget uh, filmmakers. I would, I would think that you know, 40 bucks for a hacked iRig Pre, somewhere in that sanity to do it yourself and a uh, audio technica at875 would probably be a great combination for low budget filmmakers that it's a short shotgun microphone that was intended for on-camera use but it would allow you to also boom uh, the mic and still maintain a balanced signal to the pre so you would still only have a very short portion of unbalanced uh, audio coming in here. The pre in the iRig is pretty good and uh, being able to supply 48 volt phantom power to microphones really opens up the whole world of what's available out there uh, for your choices for microphones. I'm not really ready to hack this up yet. Uh, if you guys really want to see how to do this I could probably buy another one of these and uh, show you how uh, that hack could be done. And uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments. And remember, it's easy to get a hold of me on the Frugal Filmmaker um, user group, uh, either the Google Plus one or the one on Facebook. Um, what else do we... I think that's it. So, you know, go out there, shoot some films, uh, do some tests. Uh, if you if you use the iRig Pre or if you have a, another related video, uh, send me a link and we'll link it to uh, this video. Uh, maybe we'll make a playlist or whatever.